Good morning. How's everybody doing? Monday morning at 5.15 a.m. It is too early, but we are up. We are about to start wrenching. Uh, happy April Fool's Day to everybody. Um, hope you guys have a good April Fool's Day. It brings back memories. Anyway, um, so we're working on a drone today. Um, going to be doing a lot of wrenching. I feel like I'm going to try to get this one ready to go. Ready to fly if I can. Even test fly. Uh, it's a little cold today. Maryland here, it's like 30 or something, mid 30s, 40 degrees. So hopefully it warms up a little bit before my test flight. Uh, but I have a feeling this week's gonna be a busy one. Uh, we're still prepping for the AUVSI uh, conference, the Exponential in Chicago at the end of the month. And I have some very cool things that I'm gonna be uh, unveiling and displaying there. So I really can't wait for that, it's gonna be great. Um, so yeah, that's about all I got. Hope you guys have a good one. Hopefully um, today we'll be doing some cool things. So we will be documenting the day as it goes. So thank you guys as always for watching. I'm enjoying taking these little snap stories and making them a little bit different into a vlog. So um, yeah, let's do it. So this is what we call the flight controller. This is the DJI A3 flight controller. So this thing right here uh, allows the drone to, oh, get in focus here, okay. This flight controller right here allows the drone to uh, maintain stability and fly the aircraft. Without this, the aircraft could not fly. So each of the six motors plugs in here, and this has internal gyros and accelerometers, which allows it to understand its orientation and how it's currently, uh, its attitude, more or less, forward, back, left, right. It understands where the drone is, it, it's po the position of the drone. This right here is the GPS puck, so this will pick up satellites and tell the drone where it is. So between these two things right here, it, uh, these two components, this allows the drone to maintain stability, to fly, and to uh, maintain an accurate heading and an accurate position. So without this, we could only maintain a level flight and just maintain authority of the drone. But when we take uh, the uh, internal IMU and the brain, and then we couple that with GPS and it knows its position in space, then that allows us to do a accurate hands-off hovering and it allows the internal computer to fly the drone itself uh, completely autonomously. All right, we're making good progress. So it's coming out all right. Got battery connectors hooked in, uh, installing flight controller and uh, the external sensors here uh, for redundancy. We've got uh, external or additional GPS pucks as well. So we have redundancy here. So we are actually triple redundant. Um, but yeah, looking good. So I'll have to program it and then head out and test flight. I think I think it's possible today. I think we can do it. So now that everything is mounted nicely, um, we now go into updating. So we have connected. Uh, the flight controller and the DJI light bridge, which is the uh, way in which we communicate with the flight controller from the RC controller. So the pilot will use this and he will wiggle the sticks in such a way. And uh, in this case, we're using light bridge. So this one will receive the signal and then output that signal to the main control unit, the flight controller. Uh, this one also sends HDMI like video. So high definition video back to the user from the camera on board. So this one, we're setting that up with the FPV uh, camera right there. So we're just updating everything to the latest firmwares to make sure that everything is compatible and has the latest and greatest firmware updates. And then we will uh, continue with the setup of the flight controller once everything's updated. So now here in this menu, I am telling the computer where everything is located. So here I have the central brain and here I have a backup IMU, which is a backup sensor. 
and a third backup sensor. This is the third IMU. So all these together are measuring the attitude and the angle of the aircraft while it's in flight. And we've got three for redundancy, and as well we have three GPS pucks. Um, we really only need one, but we got two more for redundancy. So now what we do here is we go ahead and we tell uh, the computer where everything's located. And luckily I've done a few of these before. So bam, I got my uh, little setup here, and this, this just shows uh, my settings that I normally uh, that I normally put in for the MFD 5000 series because I've done a few of them. Usually I just pop them in. First flight is a hands-off hover. So hopefully we're gonna do that again today. Okay, so we're preparing for some test flights. So I gotta charge packs. Um, so here are the batteries that we're using. Uh, here's my charge case for the batteries. Uh, I've got two different types of batteries here. These are smart, intelligent batteries as they call them. Uh, these have internal uh, discharging down to storage, which is cool. And then these are just standard packs uh, with the, you know, just a standard lithium uh, polymer battery pack. And here is my custom charge case, courtesy of Joe at Rotorcraft. Um, this thing is awesome. This thing came out really great. Um, so here I've got the Revo Electrics uh, chargers. I got four of them in here uh, with the bump. Um, I seriously need to make a video on how this charge case works because it's really cool. But uh, more or less, I'm just going to set up the chargers now with the batteries, uh, charge them, then hopefully head out to the field this afternoon and test. All right, so I've connected everything up, uh, and it may look a little confusing if you're not used to looking at chargers and such like this, but it's really quite simple. So here, this is enough battery to fly the big drone one time. So each of these batteries is a six-cell pack, so meaning there's six um, lithium batteries that come together to form a pack. So if you have an iPhone, for example, that's one cell. You have one cell. Uh, this is six of those coming together to make 25 volts. So this is a six cell, this is a six cell, this is a six cell, and so forth. So we have four of these. So in my aircraft, when I put these two together, it's 50 volts. And I put these two together, it's 50 volts as well, paralleled in. So my whole aircraft runs off 50 volts. But we charge the batteries individually. So we use this main connector here to bring the... Uh, the power out of the charger from the wall, so we're plugged in the wall, uh, from the wall through the charger, and the charger is going to very carefully put the correct amount of voltage into this battery. In addition, we've got a small tab hooked up, which is individually hooked up to each of the six cells, so that that way it can carefully put in the exact amount of volts, I mean, down to millivolts, uh, into the charger, or into the battery, so that all of the cells match so they all charge up together at the same voltage. Okay, so now that the batteries are plugged into the charger, I need to tell the charger what kind of batteries we are going to be charging here. Um, so this one has a syst system with the bump tags. Uh, this is really, really cool. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna have to do a separate video on this, but this is just so easy, it's very cool. So um, normally these stay attached to the batteries, but um, this one, the packs are so huge, it's hard to touch the little tag to the bump zone there. So I just put it on a piece of Velcro. So I have them set up. So this is for one set, this is for the other set. Because remember, I charge them as a set here. So what I do is I take my bump tag over to here. And you can see the charger. So I just place it on, and then I move it. And then, so this I'm charging as separate packs, because I'm using two of the chargers together. And then it says my how big my battery is, uh, what's the C rating on the charge, how many times I've charged it and such. Everything's great. So it's going to show me my charge current and everything. And then it's going to pull up and then that's it. And then on this side, I go to three, I touch it again with the other one, separate, hit go. And just like that, we are charging all four batteries without having to change a single setting. So I'm still getting used to this. Uh, this is a little different for me. I'm used to the eye chargers. So um, it's looking really good. I like this thing so far. So we're gonna charge up packs and then hopefully go test fly this afternoon if we can make it. So we need some 3M sticky Velcro to tape some components together. But this freaking dog, this guy, Hey, we gotta work, buddy. We gotta work. It's a work day. It's a work day. Now that the electronics have been placed, the wires have been tidied up, um, and the battery connectors are all in, the finishing touch is to put on the battery plate 
right here. This has the quick release battery mechanism with the rails and uh, it's cool. So I've just got, uh, it's about a dozen bolts or so that go uh, on to attach this onto the aircraft. So I will put these bolts on, but they are red in color. That way, if anybody, if the user ever has to get to the underside and get to the electronics below, they just take out the red bolts. Then they have full access to the flight controller and computer underneath so that they can do uh, whatever else they might need to do, move anything or plug something in. Uh, I also gave them a nice 50 volt out or a uh, 12S out. That way, if they ever want to hook up a DRTK or a regulator or whatever else, they've got a spare um, 12S line coming right out uh, from the batteries. So we'll button this thing up, uh, a few minor touches, then uh, this one's ready for test flight. And the top deck has been mounted. Cool, just about ready to finish it up. And Viola, it's done. There it is, ready to go. It's pretty big, pretty big. It kind of takes up my whole workshop. But um, this one's ready to go. Um, testing possibly this afternoon, might push till tomorrow. But um, yeah, it's ready, this one came out good. And we made it in time before the sun goes down. We even brought the pup. <laughs> so, time for some testing here. Beautiful day, beautiful little afternoon. So I've got my um, little clamp here. Gonna go grab some weights. We'll chuck on like 20 pounds for a test. And uh, made in this sucker. There it is, it's ready to go. So we got another one set up here. We got our FPV feed going, our battery telemetry going. We've got the aircraft, 20 pound payload, and we've got a good boy. Okay. So this is a uh, first flight on this one, just spooling it up for the first time. Oh yeah! We're looking good! All right, we're just doing a little bit of a speed run here. Booking at 45. Woo so now that it's flying okay, manual mode, we'll put it on Leechy. So this is a simple autopilot software where I literally just dropped a few points and uh, we're just gonna have it do an autonomous mission. So I'm gonna start the mission and it's just um, four little waypoints and then it's gonna return home right here. So, I'm gonna go on up. I'm gonna go to 100 feet, do a few waypoints here. Nothing too crazy. Go first waypoint. And then as you can see down here, it's following the path. And we've got our FPV video going here. So just really simple, it's the same way that a Phantom or a Mavic or Spark or an Inspire or whatever would be doing its uh, points. So as you can see here, it's following the points really nicely. It's following its path beautifully. So this is what I like to do. Just make sure that it's going to be uh, working just fine autonomously because these guys aren't really going to be flying manually too much. I don't know. They might. Who knows what they're going to be doing. But um, yeah, it's following its path exactly as it should. And um, yeah, it couldn't really be any better. So it's coming on here. Coming around, coming to point four. And then when it's at here, it should be a return to home scenario. All right, just stopped. Now it should be a return to home after a few seconds. There we go. Over here. And the return to home always seems a lot closer than it is. <laughs> so now it's descending down. And once again, you can see right here, you can zoom in to the, to the app. You can see we're right over our home point. Still have good FPV feed, good satellites and everything. Our battery, we're still looking great. And the aircraft 
just coming down nice and slowly. The descent speed's a little slow. The descent speed could be a little bit faster, I think. But um, no complaints here. And of course the snap story ended when it was five feet above the ground. But it landed okay. Uh, did a full autonomous mission here. Um, as you can see, we just flew our points. Everything was wonderful. Um, yeah, so it's our little quick test mission. So this aircraft is good to go. I'll wipe it down, throw it in the case, and we'll be good. And now Milo can go play with his ball again. You're good, I'm done here. You can go play now. <laughs> All right, it was a productive day. We did good. Drone got finished and uh, a test flew, and so we'll ship it out to a customer tomorrow. And Mr. Milo got his crazy out. Nice job, pup. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Man, this was a long one. Whew. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a detailed look at the uh, finishing and completion and test flights of a brand new MFD 5K for a client. Thank you guys, see ya.